What's up guys, this is Corey here with Toothless Reptiles in San Diego. As always, make sure to visit us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, check us out on Twitter, check out our website, and um, obviously subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I had quite a few inquiries um, about how I set up my actual boxes that I put the eggs in for the incubator. Um, and while I've kind of explained what I do on multiple occasions, I haven't actually gone through everything that I do. Um, so I'm going to do just a step-by-step -step of every single thing that I do um, when I set up my boxes, and it's real simple. Um, so I start out with Rubbermaid containers. Um, these are 14.2 liter containers or 15 quart containers, and these just happen to fit perfectly inside my, the wine fridges and my uh, Forma Scientific incubators. I use the water jacketed ones. Um, so there's not a lot of wasted space and as you can see they're rather thick so it leaves me um, a good area to put a lot of media without having the eggs touching the bottom of the container which is a no-no while still having enough air space above the top of the egg for the cap um, and I'll take that container and before I do anything I'll take the top and I put a quarter inch hole uh, in all four corners and then a larger hole in the center that I can drop a temperature probe down in because I like to have probes at my eggs. Um, you can have probes all around the incubator but honestly you really just care what temperature the actual eggs are at. So um, I do all that and then I'm ready to start setting up these bins. So the first thing I do is I have a scale and I keep it on grams. Um, use your imagination you can find one of these. <laughs> Uh, so I put it on grams because that's what I'm used to. You know what I'm saying? So we'll put it over to grams. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is weigh these containers. Generally, they're around 325 grams. Um, and I'll just tear that because I'm going to want to weigh out the media. So I'm going to tear that. So now we're at zero grams. And the media I use is hatch right, and I mix it at a one to one ratio of water to hatch right. So I know that for these tubs, I can put 800 grams of hatch right, and it gives me the perfect amount of media to where I can sit the eggs down in it about 50% down into the hatch right, and there's plenty of room underneath, and I have plenty of room above, and I still have enough to kind of push in on the sides. Um, so I'll dump 800 grams of hatch right into this container and I'll just watch it change on the front So it's actually it'll look like a lot when you put it in there And that's 790 822 so if you see the front of the Scale, I don't know if you can see that but it says 821 so now I'm going to match that with water, so I can put 1642 if I want. But usually I'll just kind of square it off to 1600. So now we're going to add our distilled water. Do not use anything but distilled water. Um, don't even I don't even use RO water. I use specifically distilled water because it's already gone through an evaporation process, and in your incubator, you are essentially setting up an evaporation process. So um, once it's already been distilled, there's no longer any, uh, the parts per million count in the water is very low. So you shouldn't have any issues with contamination in the water. Um, so now I'm just going to add water until I get up to about 1600. I'll take this up to 1640 just to be more exact for you guys. But, so I overfilled it, which isn't a huge deal. I'm at 1692. So if I wanted to, I could add a little more hatch right, but I know that it's it's not really going to matter. I didn't overfill it by a lot, you know, a, a few grams of water isn't going to hurt us. But So now I'm at 1692, if you can look at that. Um, so now that's it for mixing my hatch right to water ratio. So that's all set. And I don't bother mixing it up because once you put the top on and set it in the incubator and let it sit in there for a while, the water's going to spread out and everything's going to acclimate and uh, it'll be good to go. Um, one of the tips that I always do is once I have that set, I put the top on, take it off the scale, tear it so my scale is now zeroed out, and I'll throw the entire thing on there with the top on so I can have an actual weight of the entire container 
with no eggs because this is exactly how I'm going to weigh it when I have the eggs inside of it because um, I'm not going to want to take the top on and off to get an accurate weight. So I'll weigh that right now and they generally end up around 2150. Um, this one was 2150 when I used this top last um, but right now it's at 2210. So 2210. So now that I know the exact weight of that entire box now I can put the eggs in it and do another weight and I'll put that up here as well. So I'll put a total weight with the eggs and I can subtract that out and I know exactly how much my eggs weigh now. Um, and that helps out with keeping track of humidity. So you're going to have a, a certain amount of humidity loss in your incubator because obviously you want your incubator open to the atmosphere somewhere or you get a biometric pressure differential and you'll end up popping your eggs. Um, I've seen it happen where the eggs actually explode when you shut the door because you create a positive atmospheric pressure when you shut the door and the eggs will explode. Um, which is another reason why we always ventilate the tops of the egg boxes and then there's always some type of ventilation in the incubator whether it's a, a literally a quarter inch hole in the back of the incubator or I just don't go the extra mile to full on seal it because you don't really need to. The, the, the humidity loss inside the incubator is plenty manageable with just a small hole. It's not like you have a six inch wide hole and you're going to lose a ton of humidity every day. Like I, I fill up the water tubs in there once a week and if I miss a few days it's there's still plenty of water in there. Um, but so I do all that and then what it allows me to do is that I can keep track of this tub and maintain the water that's inside the tub at all times. So with the humidity that's lost inside the incubator there's obviously going to be an exchange between the top of your egg box and the incubator and that is going to be lost so you're going to lose weight here and this is really where you want to maintain your humidity in here and maintaining your humidity in the incubator essentially just maintains your humidity at your eggs so um, I'll pull my tubs out once a week when I refill the water and I'll throw them on the scale and I'll make sure they're good if they're a couple grams low I can dump some water um, back inside and reweigh or what I usually end up doing if you really want to get precise and you don't want to take the top off this to let the heat out and subject your eggs to a somewhat of a temperature differential if you're really annual about it. Um, you can take a syringe and just squirt you know a syringe full of water through some of the quarter inch holes which is usually all you need. There's not a huge amount of water loss. You're not going to be over here pouring water in there. Um, but that's what I do to set up those tubs and then once it's set up, I put it in the incubator and I let it acclimate. So when I go to grab it, when my female's laying eggs, um, it's already warm. So um, it doesn't take a long time for it to heat back up when I get the eggs, put them in there, and put it back in the incubator. Um, it really maintains a better heat. And, and then obviously the, the media inside here doesn't suck the heat out of the eggs, um, which is what we really don't want. So that's basically what I do. I just make sure I keep track of the weight and everything. I use 800 grams of water, 800 grams of hatch, right? Make sure I weigh out my containers and then I just set the eggs in. Um, a tip that I use, if you have a child or an Easter egg lying around, um, take your Easter egg and wiggle it around in there and you can pre-make your pockets to set your eggs in if you don't want to take your egg and you know use your actual egg to rub a nice indent in there for your egg to sit in use an Easter egg to get you started and it also helps you um, set up your rows prior to getting your eggs in there so you can make them all look nicer you know because for me I you know I'm in I'm in engineering so I like to uh, get everything all nice and dialed in in a row so um, that's another top tip and uh, what else was I gonna say I had um, another thing I usually do is um, I don't mess with these. So you don't need to check on them. Uh, you can leave them in the incubator. Once your incubator is set up and your temps are good, just, just leave them be. You know, Aside from pulling them out once a week and checking the water levels and adding water if you need to, um, you don't need to do anything to them. I, uh, I will candle my eggs just for fun um, periodically throughout their incubation process. Um, and it's more so to keep an eye on development and also um, I'm pretty good at knowing when the eggs are going to be
be ready to hatch because there is such a large window with water monitor eggs and when they hatch or when they don't hatch. Um, but if you can do that, uh, you're going to be really successful. And a lot of people out there are being successful. That's why I'm making this video. Um, but, but there are a lot of good alternatives to using media, um, which have been coming out more and more lately. Um, I know Sim Hatch or Sim Containers uh, with John Adragna, they have a really good alternative to using media. So if you can use something like that, um, I personally have never used it, but it's a uh, good thing to try. And um, so let me know how you like the video. And please like and subscribe. And as always, keep feeding and email me if you have any questions.